When we treat others badly, this is a personality disorder to God. It's not the personality or the behaviour that he created you to exhibit or to have. God understands our hurt, but he doesn't want us to keep hurting others. Where there's a cycle of abuse or evil, he doesn't want us to contribute to it, to give it more force, enable it to go on. When evil hits good, evil stops. When the light is shone in the darkness, the darkness cannot understand it and cannot overpower it. This is why Jesus said, do not repay evil for evil. When we repay evil with evil, we enforce evil. We give it more power and it wins. Even if we think we're fighting against evil with evil, we're really contributing to the battle. We're inspiring hatred. God wants us to diffuse evil. He wants us to be the goodness which evil deflects off of. He wants us to be the goodness. Goodness that stands firm in his name. Walking with the Lord is not easy. Yesterday we spoke about adding to your persuasion, excellence, virtue and uprightness. In other words, being completely honest about that which you are persuaded of. No deceit in working out what you are persuaded of. This is sometimes hard when we mix with Christian culture, for sometimes we say we're persuaded of things which we're not truly persuaded of. Jesus said that we should worship him in spirit and in truth, as truly who we really are. He said this after speaking to the woman at the well. The woman at the well said, he told me everything I ever did. The people from her town apparently came to persuasion of him as the Christ. But in verse 42 of that chapter, it actually says that first of all they believed because they heard what she said, then they believed because they heard him themselves. They were persuaded with no deceit, and they were truthful about why and what they were persuaded of. The verse that we looked at yesterday comes from 2 Peter 1 verse 5. And it goes on to verse 7, this statement which says, For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to your goodness knowledge, to the knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. Yesterday we spoke about faith and goodness. Today we talk about knowledge. The knowledge here is gnos. It basically means experiential knowledge, functional working, knowledge which is gleaned from first-hand experience, personal experience, connecting with theory and education and not just believing it. In other words, gain a direct relationship. This is not therefore a head knowledge, but it is a working out of your persuasion in excellence, with uprightness and complete honesty. It's a knowledge similar to science. It's where you've tested and tried something. Walking with the Lord is this sort of knowledge. You gain experience of him as you walk with him. John 1, 4 verse 8 says God is love. Therefore it is walking with this love acting out his love and choosing his love in every situation. Instead of reacting, we act and go to the prayer closet and discuss everything with him. This is a hard way to live, to always act in love, particularly when we do not feel like it. It's a journey we go on throughout our life 
and if we take his hand, we go on it day by day, moment by moment, with him, choosing always to come back where we have once gone off. And so how do we take God on our journey? By obeying his commandments, in every situation. This will change us, guaranteed, for in every situation you are not going to want to choose to love someone who has hurt you. But God says that when you do that, you will not be defeated. Psalm 62 verse 6 says, He is my defender, I will not be defeated. The Bible asks us to turn the other cheek, not so we will be slapped on the second one every time, but so God can then fight our battles. Effectively, God is saying, evil stops with you. When evil comes to you, don't repay evil for evil, but choose my commandments. Treat others as you would like to be treated, no matter how they treat you. Don't choose the negatives or look at the negatives. Do not repay and vengeance is mine. God wants to come with us on every journey, for he says, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. I have called you by name and you are mine. I have loved you and I have redeemed you. And when you pass through the waters, they will not overflow you. Though you walk through rivers, they won't go over your head. And though you walk through fire, it shall not burn you. We find out and realise just how persuaded we are of the theory by how we act in our experience. If I come to the place where I am totally persuaded from him inside that I can go into the lion's den and he will be with me, then I will go in to the lion's den. I will not fear and even if human emotion brings up fear within me, I will know that that is just an emotion and he who is with me is bigger than emotion. The Psalms say that some trust in chariots and others in horses. They march forward and fail, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God and we walk forward and are successful. When we truly know that success is found, originates and lives in him, then he is our focus and not success in a worldly way. We are so grounded in the physical that we see success in physical terms, but success is truly living in peace that passes understanding in love that is stable even when hurt or broken. This is only ever truly found in Jesus. Our walk with Jesus is not just internal, but is external. It is a choice, but it's a choice to take that which is already within us out into the world that experiences us. As people experience us, they can truly experience him. And as we experience him, we can truly experience him more. In a situation where I am damaged and hurt and broken, where it, where it is unfair and I am discouraged, or even badly treated, if I am persuaded that he is my defender, that he is my protection, that he is my provision, that he is my deliverer, that he is God Almighty, that he is the Lord of hosts, which means the Lord of war, 
that vengeance is his, that his command to me is to love, then I can choose to love my enemies, an active, living force. I can choose to respond in love. I can choose not to say the bitter word or do the evil action. I don't have to run in fear when I know that he is here. This is a hard lesson to learn, but walking with God is literally walking with God. It's not just time in the prayer closet, but time in the prayer closet and then time on the open road. It is true that if I have no time in the prayer closet, I have no companion on the open road. Not because he is not there, for he is always there, but I am not so aware. I am grounded, and in order to add to my persuasion, goodness, virtue, and uprightness, then I have to be open with myself and open with him in the prayer closet. I say, Lord, I am persuaded of this. But as the disciples said, give me more persuasion of that. Lord, you say love. Lord, I'm persuaded that I'm meant to love. Persuade me of how to do this. Enable me. And then I step out onto the open road with a determination to fulfill his command with him beside me. Denying the emotions and the thoughts and the feelings that would lead me away from that which is his standard. And as I choose him, I gain experience, knowledge of him. I add to my uprightness and my virtue in my relationship with him an experiential knowledge of him. I come across situations and the next time these things happen, I know what my Lord can do, would do, would have me do. The path to knowledge is also a path of failure. In my failings, I learn what went wrong. He says, get up, put your hand in mine. Let's get back into that boat together. Peter saw Jesus coming on the water and all he had to do was wait. Jesus was going to pass them over, which means show the glory of God. But Peter said, if it is you, let me come to you. It was the stepping out of the position of being a human being that caused Peter's failure. Human beings do not walk on water. And yet, in the failure, Peter proved that with God, human beings can walk on water. This occurrence happened because Peter failed. The greater miracle for Peter was found in his failure. Jesus had no need to hold Peter up above the water before Peter stepped out of the boat. But because Peter fell, Jesus lifted him up. Perhaps it would have been better for Peter to sit and see the glory of God. And yet, because God makes all 
things beautiful in his time. Because God turns every situation for our good when we are called according to his purposes and we love him, which means obeying his commands. Jesus made something beautiful out of Peter's falling. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in our way. It says when we fall, we will not stay down for the Lord lifts us up with his hands. The Lord lifted Peter when Peter fell. The Lord ordered Peter's steps and in Peter's humanity, with Peter's zeal and enthusiasm and need, Peter stepped out of the boat. He asked more of God than what was natural and needed in that situation. But God did not let him fall. God will not let me fall or you fall, especially if we add to our persuasion, virtue, excellence and uprightness, being completely honest with him and others. The Lord will never let us down. But how do we get this persuasion? By adding to our virtue knowledge knowledge of walking with him knowledge of choosing his way knowledge of praying instead of shouting and reacting and striving and searching knowledge of saying i'm sorry simply because he commands that we live in peace with one another whether it is our fault or not which is the hardest thing to do. Knowledge of saying, I forgive you, even when your day has been completely ruined, even when your life has been completely ruined. This is the knowledge that God offers us. And it is truly in gaining this knowledge of a life with him that we find peace, love, joy, because effectively we are choosing to keep living our lives with him. Every day, every decision, every conversation, every argument, and it's a process. It's a passing through. But though you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And though you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. And though you travel through the rivers, they will not overflow you. Failure is not final when you travel it with your father. Failure will bring a lesson. Daily life will build your experience. And the love of God. The love of God will guide you, instruct you, forgive you, fulfill you, undertake for you, cover a multitude of your sins as you cover the multitude of sins done against you. He can empower us to do this. He walks with us. He talks with us. Will I allow him to give me that experience today is the question. Consider what experience you want to have today. Choose life to love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind is to choose life. Spend time in prayer, dedicating your life 
afresh to an experience of the living God. And be still and know that he is God. <laughs>